Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman and uh, my buddy Matt Richard is back. How you doing, Pastor? It's good to see you there, Harrison. You too, hanging in there through Lent? Yeah, we uh, I was just mentioning earlier to you, we have a Higher Things retreat coming up on Friday and Saturday and uh, getting the numbers in. We got a good crew coming and uh, making sure we have all of our T's crossed and our I's dotted and uh, everybody does what they're supposed to, which is it's great. It's really fun to be able to work with people when everybody does their piece of the puzzle, I guess you say, or does their own part. Things go smoothly. Absolutely. So yeah. I love doing the retreats too. They're uh they're, they're they're a lot more sort of low key. And so you get a lot more chance to kind of talk about the the, the important stuff with with kids one on one. Um it's been it's been a really uh it's been a lot of fun whenever I've gotten to, to do one of those. So that's that's good. I hope you yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. You know, last year I I, I put a mattress here in my this is my office here and I had a mattress mm-hmm. in my office and I had a little hole and I got so frustrated. I was trying to like put some tape on it and my pocket knife out and I got so angry. I just, I, all of a sudden I just, I stabbed my mattress and I, and so then I had to sleep in my pickup. It was like 15 degrees. Also I went in my pickup and I slept there the most of the night in the freezing cold. And so this time I'm gonna bring two mattresses this year as a backup. So I like that. No pocket. Well, I can't say no pocket knife. I know you, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I used to keep a least. cot under my chair um, in my office for, for when we did the lock-ins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm getting old. I don't, I'm not sleeping on the floor anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, so speaking about that feeling, uh, what does Jesus say about humility? Right. Well, I said, I said to you before, I said, I'm glad we could talk about humility because I know a lot about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm that's really- not actually the brag that you think it is though. I, I mean, that, that because the Lord sort of finds a way to teach it to us, doesn't he? Right. It's like, it's like saying, I'm really good at being humble. Right. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. When we think about humility, I'm, I'm always brought to the Beatitudes, where he says, "Blessed are the uh, poor in spirit, blessed are the mourning, blessed are the humble and the hungry." And yeah, you know, I heard one theologian once say that the thing is with uh, humility, or maybe it was even Luther. I'm trying to recall that the humility, as soon as you start talking about it, it vanishes. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it vanishes. It's so it's so tricky. You know, because as soon as you do start talking about humility, you think about how good you are, then you've lost it. Pride seeps in. And so I would say that humility is is definitely it's a gift because when you're humble, uh, you can receive good things. Uh, when you are full of pride, your hands are what? Your hands are full, right? You're mm-hmm. not you're they're not open to be givable to, as an old professor right. once said of mine. Uh, you know, so when we think of the Beatitudes, especially blessed are the poor in spirit, um, you know, because they will be, be given to. Blessed are those who are hungry because they'll be fed. And so the blessing of humility is that you can receive good gifts when your hands are open and you're humble. Uh, but to get there, boy, that pride has to be crucified. And that's the difficult part. Right. Everybody talks about humility like it's a good thing. But when we talk about where it comes from, which is humiliation, uh, that that part that part's less fun. But they're the same word. It, to, to be humble is to be humiliated. Like this is where it, it gets your hands are open. We don't of our own reason or strength open them to the Lord and be like, "You're right, I I, I am not that." You, you get squashed until there's nothing left, and and it, it's a gift. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you think about you know our 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 standard uh, confession of sin that we have, right? I a poor mm-hmm. miserable sinner of sin and thought, word and deed. And if you really, really, you know, if, if you and I really take a good look at those words. Um, they're hard words. You know, we're, we're basically saying, Lord God, you're all, Lord God Almighty, if you wanted to send down a lightning bolt from your throne of glory and smite us all into hell, you'd be completely just to do that. That would be completely mm-hmm. fair. And so we say that and we confess that. And, and if we really look at those words, wow, is that humbling uh, that we have sinned and thought we're indeed, that we have nothing to offer God. And then, then the pastor gets up and in this absolute radical turn of events, he puts his hand on the font, raises his hand, and he says, in the stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. And then right after that, the the, the church kind of begins its service by what? We sing in, we're singing out the Kyrie. You know, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. It's the cry of humility. Uh, blind Bartimaeus, blind Bart, as I always say. It's the crying hmm. out of all the beggars. Uh, Son of David, have mercy on me. And true humility, because we have nothing uh, to bring. What is that, that old hymn, right? Rock of Ages, nothing... Uh, that I can bring only to the cross that I cling, uh, something to that effect, and that—that mm-hmm. that is true humility. That we we've, we've got nothing, uh, but we have Jesus, and so when we have Jesus, we have everything. Right, and and this is actually one of those places where you actually you see humility as the gift that it is, because when you have nothing left to earn uh, of your own accord, 
all you have is Jesus. And then you have something that's secure because of, of all the stuff that we try and take pride in, like of all the places that we would brag, how many of those things can crumble so, so quick of all the places where I, I work and I strive. And I think maybe I'm actually starting to figure this out. Maybe I'm actually good at this. And then along comes someone who's better, or even just, I messed up myself and, and I'm left alone to try and rebuild. But if, if we really just stand there and say, you know what? Jesus just forgave all my sins through my pastor. I'm perfect. I have no, like there, there, I'm not climbing a hill. I'm, I've already been saved. It's it's a joy because you get to mark something in the past tense, despite all of the accusations of the present. Yeah. I mean, think of Paul, what he says in Philippians, right? He goes on this whole, this, I just love how he does mm-hmm. it. He's like, you know, as far as, uh, you know, uh, credentials, let's, let's just, Let's yeah, just this is the knowledge. ultimate humble brag right there. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. So he's like, let, credentials. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to meet you, right? So as far as education, right, boom. As far as zeal, boom. As far as what? Circumcised on the eighth day, boom. From the tribe, right? right. Tri- so he he lists all his credentials and he's holding it up, his resume. It's basically saying, you know what? I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, got, I got more credentials, more cred than you do. But at the very end of the day, all that I have actually, uh, you know, extolled and, and shared with you is, is I love that word, scubala, uh, horse dung, right? Yeah, uh, it, it's trash, right? It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty strong word in the mm-hmm. Greek language. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very strong word. And so it's, it, I consider it all what dung compared to the surpassing richness of Jesus. And so, yeah, you, you, you hit the nail on the head there, Harrison, that when, you know the, the the blessing of humility is that we we basically say I've got nothing I don't know much of anything but Christ knows me, and mm-hmm. so in the midst of our humility that I would say is God given to us that we have to be ground down to a fine powder to realize that we're nothing, and then we realize again and again and again that we can't contribute anything that we are what poor miserable sinners, and then everything is given to us as a sheer gift. Well, in that humility, there's joy, there's there's peace, there's patience. You know, there's there's all these good gifts that are given unto us. And that we can cling to Christ and, and mm-hmm. the assurance that we have in Him. Luther has all these great quotes, right? All the time, where these interactions with with the evil one. Uh, the one I just I love, and I'm going to paraphrase. Yeah, and I, I think he was in the Wartburg Castle, and the devil came at him and and to con- convict him of all of his sins. And so Luther says something to the effect: "Where I sat down, I read Scripture, and I read about Jesus." So then he said, "I arose and I went to the evil foe, and I added another twenty sins, or whatever. There's another twenty sins you to his these, list. Forgot these, yeah. Forgot these, <laughs> Satan, and then." I made the sign of the cross, committed myself to Christ, and went to bed. Amen. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. He he's better at it than me. If I'm going to be like completely honest with you, uh, the way that Christianity confronts humiliation, humility is not the way that old Adam wants to hear it. Um, I, I I want to hear when I I acknowledge that I have been humiliated. I want to be told it's not as bad as you think. These are all the things you're actually pretty good at. I remember actually talking to my pastor at the time. Um, it was it was hands down the most humiliated I have ever been in my entire life. Um, and all I felt was was broken and exposed and and empty and and not enough. And, and I remember lamenting to him, just just weeping on the phone. And um he 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 first named me, which is how I knew it was going to be serious, uh, because he, he was Harrison. And he he starts talking about Jesus. He 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 didn't actually say it's not as bad as you think. He he didn't actually say you're actually pretty good at these things or everything. He just went, you're a baptized child of God. And a lot of stuff can fall apart, but our Lord has a love for you that will surpass all of it. it it's it's the thing that I didn't want to let go of at, at the time. And it was it was a gift that he preached to me, Jesus, uh, because some things in this world break and can be fixed and some things in this world break and can't. But... Christ has already offered us an identity in him. He has already offered us a, a victory that no amount of humiliation can erode. Um, it, it, it actually has to be ripped from our hands, uh, the things that we find value in. And here, humility actually becomes a gift because it, it's you're not given a chance to trade up just a little bit. Everything that, that all of your old idols, um, all of the earthly treasures where wrath and must uh, destroy, where thieves break in, they're, they're taken from your hands so that all you have left is, is room for Jesus. It's, it's a gift. Yeah. Well, Jeremiah kind of hits on this, doesn't he? He talks about the word being a hammer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hammers are cool, but gosh, you know, to be a recipient of a hammer, that's painful, Uh, especially to have our idols smashed to the ground and all of our endeavors, uh, all the things that we, our spiritual resumes ripped up, right? Mm -hmm. Cast underfoot. Uh, And when it all comes down to it, to realize again, you know, uh, it's like some of the older saints that I've run into over the years, you know, I don't know much of anything pastor, you know, their whole life lived and I don't know much of anything. Uh, in fact, I remember one 
one guy saying, I don't know much of anything, but I do know Jesus loves me. And I'm like, that's profound. That's, 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 that's great. a lot. That's, that's, that's awesome. You know, that we don't know much of anything. We don't contribute much anything. And that uh, more of our life than, than not has been life of failures. You know, I tell this to, to younger men that, that the majority of my life, I've failed more than I've succeeded, you know, and I've probably actually failed a whole lot more that I don't even realize. Yeah. And then at the end of the day to realize that Christ cleanses me of all of my sins, marks me as one of the baptized and that I have assurance in him. Uh, gosh, we could be fools for Jesus, right? Fools Amen. for Jesus. There's the gift of it to be a fool for Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, good to see you, Harrison. Have a good day.